What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today we will be looking at the Ravel Monogram Limited Edition Linda Von Miss Hurst Hurst Airy Olds Model Kit. And now for this video, I put on my British Columbia Oldsmobile Club jacket from the 1990s to show you the inside of the Linda Vaughn Hearst Harry Olds model kit. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. This is a 124 scale plastic model kit with a fully painted figure of Linda Vaughn and the Hearst Golden Shifter in the back. On this side of the box, we can see a photograph of the model shown in the actual size. And on this side of the box, we see the full Hearst Golden Shifter here, as well as Miss Linda Vaughn right there. And then we have a rear three quarters of the car and the car with the top off, the body. And here we see the engine in the front as well as the engine in the back. These are Tornado engines meant for front wheel drive put in both ends. And the bottom of the box gives us all our details for the model. The model is eight and a half inches long with 67 pieces and the body is molded in white with silk screen water slide decals. This is a skill level three kit intended for ages 12 and up requires paint and glue. Here's our instruction sheet for the Linda Vaughn Miss Hurst Hearst Harry Olds model kit and here we have a nice photograph of Linda Vaughn as well as a big write-up which I'll put in the doobly-doo down below. And underneath the photograph of Miss Hearst we have the symbols that you're going to see as you build your model as well as the read this before you begin, the decal application instructions and the paint call-out chart which calls out for flat black, satin black, gloss black, gold, gloss red, flat white, silver, and transparent red. Step one shows our engine assembly, and you're going to build two of these engine blocks, but one is only shown. So here we have our injector scoop, which is chrome, as well as the bug catcher front, the blower front cover, the blower body, and the blower rear cover. All of these are chrome components. Then you have your chrome valve covers, your plastic cylinder head, the right and left hand side of the engine with the headers molded in place and the Tornado front differential also molded in place. And then we also have our other cylinder head and our other valve cover and then the entire belt and pulley assembly. Once all your parts are together, this is what your completed engine will look like. Before we begin the chassis assembly, here we have the wheel and tire assembly. So we have our outer wheels, which are the Tornado type wheel. The wheel retainer, our drag slick tires, and the inside wheel, which you would paint flat black. Panel 2 shows our chassis assembly, and the chassis is basically straightforward. It's a flat pan with the wheel arches molded in place. We also have our front suspension here as a separate unit, and our rear suspension also as a separate unit. These use the torque type springs instead of the regular coil springs or leaf springs. Now here we have the axle pin sticking out, so make sure that you scrape any seam lines off of here so that the wheel retainers will hold the wheels on nicely. Now we drop our engines into the chassis as well, and then we add on these exhaust tips on both sides, which would connect into here and mount on the chassis as well. And finally, we round it up by adding on our wheels onto these axle pins. Panel 3 shows the interior assembly, and this is really nice because they also include photographs of the interior of the actual car. And here you can see we've got our steering wheel, steering column, and the dashboard. And there are some painting notes around here as well. It says paint steering wheel gloss black with silver spokes. And then painter's note paint dash insert gold. All gauges are satin black with silver trim. We also have this wonderful roll cage in three three steps. <laughs> we have our front bucket seats and the seat belts are actually decals which go on here which is really nice. Then we have our throttles and we also have our gloss or shifters right here as well and that would go up into the floorboards of the interior bucket. Panel 4 shows our body assembly, and here it says to paint the body gloss black with gold sides, 
and then you would install the window once the paint is all dry and that would just go straight up here. Once you get the window glass installed, then you want to add on the rear bumper and the front grill and bumper. And always remember that you want the plastic to plastic contact. So put in the bumper and check where it contacts in on the body. And you want to scrape off the paint in the body and the chrome around the grill where it's going to be glued, just on the gluing surfaces. Add a little glue in here and then squish it in and let it dry. Panel 5 shows the body, interior, and chassis assembly. So here we have the completed body, which will go down onto the completed interior, which will all go down onto the completed chassis. Panel 6 shows the figure and shifter details. So here we have a wonderful picture of the golden shifter, as well as the Hearst Harry Oldsmobile and Miss Linda Vaughn herself. So here we see where to put the decals on both sides of the Hearst shifter, and then the decals for Linda Vaughn, which comes pre-painted. And down here it says, the first lady of drag racing, Linda Vaughn, and there is her picture. And on the back of the instruction sheet, we have our decal placement guide. And here we can see just how many decals are all over the entire body of the model kit. There are lots and lots because this is a pro modeler decal sheet. Also included in the model kit is a certificate of authenticity. It is hereby certified that this plastic replica of the Hearst Harry Olds with figures is an authentic recreation in 124 scale and is one of 10,000 pieces. And here we have Linda Vaughn's signature as well. And there's the Linda Vaughn figure and the Hearst Golden Shifter. Now before we carry on with the video, I'm just curious of how many people actually saw Linda Vaughn racing the Hearst Harry Olds at the drag strip back in the day. If you're one of those lucky people, let us know in the comment section down below. Here we have our race ready Hearst Harry Oldsmobile model kit and you can see the hood scoops cut out in the hood and the little relief in the back behind the rear window. Now again this is a 1967 Oldsmobile which has been heavily modified for racing under these conditions. The wheel arches have been opened up quite widely. You can see the wonderful door handle molded in place. It does call out in the instructions to paint this chrome which would look really nice. There is quite a bit of flash around the edges, but overall it's not too bad. Now the trunk and the hood do not open. They're all molded in place, but that's okay because it looks how it is supposed to. There are some pretty high mold marks up underneath, which you'll have to remove with that number 16 hobby blade also up into the roof. You want to get rid of these so that they don't interfere with the glass or the undercarriage in any way, shape, or form. But overall, it is quite nice. It is quite slick and down. There is a 442 emblem just behind the fender right in there. But again, it's all ready for race, so it's nice and slick. Next up, we have our interior bucket. And again, this is very simplified. It does have the inner door panel detail, but not carried over into the back. There is no rear seat, and there are the mounting points for that nice roll cage. There are some old marks underneath the seats, which should be easy to hide just with the seat itself. There is a bit of a center console going on here, and all the mounting points for the steering wheel and those uh, gas and pedals and whatnot. There are mold marks going up in here, which will have to be all sanded down nice and flat in order to make this look great. And of course, underneath there are no mold marks at all which is why it makes me wonder why they didn't mold this <laughs> the bottom or the top actually with the technology that they did with the bottom so there wouldn't be mold marks in the bottom. But overall, again, it is quite simplistic and will look very nice once completed. Next, we take a look at the chassis. And again, it is quite simple. 
it does have the wheel arches molded in place as well as the copyright logo molded onto the back panel. Now just turning this over again we can see more of the monogram numbers and copyright stuck right in here which I don't know why they didn't just mold it in the back here again but at any rate you will have to remove those. Again mold marks seem to be the number one you know issue to deal with with this model kit. Here you can see the nice undercarriage with a bit of a bracing ladder in there. It is all a single frame under here and again quite nicely done but a, but very very simple. Now in case you're wondering on fit and finish the interior bucket actually fits right up here like a promotional style model onto those little pins and the fit is quite nice and tight from side to side. Now I haven't glued that in place so it will fall if I pull it up. But then here we have our undercarriage also going in. You will have to stretch out the sides of the body in order for that to drop in place. But again, the fit is quite tight on there. See, there's no way to shake the body out. So once again, that's just a testament to how nice and tight the tolerances are in a monogram model kit. And here we have the front and rear suspensions. And the way to tell them apart is that the front suspension has actually got these taller edges in here which looks like that, versus the rear suspension where they are quite low. Now, as I was saying, on the axles there are mold marks here. Now, it might have been seam lines as well, but the mold marks are actually preventing the wheel from getting on there. See how it's held back? So you will have to sand those off. Uh, not the pin, but the mold mark on top of the pin. I don't know if you can catch that too well, but once you get rid of that and round that down, it will allow the retainer to actually fit onto that axle. So that's just one thing to watch out for. On this parts tree, we can see our Oldsmobile 425 Tornado engines. And here you got the right and left hand side blocks. You have two of these, of course, one for the front and the back. There are those exhaust dumps, which you would glue up onto here, the molded in headers. And then we've got our cylinder heads as well, our dashboard, the steering column, and our pedals, as well as the back of the roll bar, or actually the tying brace or whatever you want to call that. And there's our instrument gauges, looks just like a 67 cutlass. And that's our little glove box way over there. So again, you can see just how nice the detail is on here for such a simplistic model kit. Again, you got the spark plugs in the cylinder heads, which is quite nice. And on the other side, there are some mold marks, which you'll have to sand these down in order to get them to fit nicely on the engine here. But overall, it is quite a nice bit of work. Now this model kit does not have very many parts in it, so we have two remaining parts trees. Now this has the steering wheel as well as the right and left hand sides of the roll cage and our wheel retainers and the bucket seats. Now there should also be a parts tree that will have these parts on it, which are the wheel backs, but I have started to build this kit a little bit, so I'm not quite sure where they are. Anyway, let's take a look at the detail on this bucket seats. Again, you can see the nice upholstery pattern in there which goes horizontal. And then you've got the bottoms of the seats. Again, we've got these pins. So those would go through the floorboards. And there are parts numbers on the bottom. I don't know if you want to get rid of those if you would see them, but I'll leave that choice up to you. Over here, we've got our race ready steering wheel, which is quite simplistic. It is very stripped down from the original 67 old steering wheel. But overall, you get the idea that this thing is race ready and ready to go. Now I'm just checking here. There are some mold marks on that roll cage, which again will have to be taken out, much like on the axle pins to get them round and smooth and professional looking. Next up, we have the chrome parts tree, and there is going to be quite a bit of tricky paintwork in here, and I'll show you in a minute. But what we have here is the rear bumper, the front bumper, as well as the grill. And then we've got our blower for the engine. We also have our valve covers and the front and back plates for those blowers. And then here we've got our hood scoops and the bug catchers and our front wheels. One thing I forgot to mention is you need to paint 
some flat black into all these little holes and a little bit in the center here as well. You'll have to look at real Tornado wheels to know how to paint them. Here we have our belts as well for those blowers and going into the engine. And we also have the chrome shifters there. So looking at this, this is where there's going to be a lot of paint work. So you will need to use a wash in the grill. And if you don't know what that is, here's a link for a video on how to wash the grills. We also have our turn signal lamps in the centers and our two headlights. Then here we have our back bumper. If I just turn this around, you can see the nice Oldsmobile lettering in here. I do believe it is supposed to be black across the back here, and the lettering is supposed to be left with the chrome, which you can easily do again, sort of by painting in here, and paint that all black, and then carefully wipe off the Oldsmobile lettering with a cloth while the black paint is still wet. Now again, you're going to have to paint in the back with some transparent red, turn signal red from testers, just to get that to look like uh, red amber. Or not red amber, but you know what I mean. So again, look at the detail on the blowers as well. They're very nicely done. Same as the valve covers and the ribbing on top of the blower, or actually the intakes. Uh, and then look at the detailing in the wheels here. Get that camera to focus. There you go. Again, quite a nice chrome parts tree and very, very beautiful looking. Next up, we have our clear components as well as our rubber tire and our wheel backs and some assembled wheels here, which I did, of course, myself. So I will just move the tires out of the way for a moment and we'll take a look at the glass. So again, here you can see the model kit number which is molded in here, as well as a cross brace in here, and then the long braces. Now this is typical of a model kit that was designed way back in 1967. We also have our front windshield and the back glass. This is all molded as one piece, as you can tell. The sad part is this was never in a plastic bag, so there are some scratches in on the clear plastic. And there's that nice cutout for the blower to sit up through. So that's basically it for the glass. Now moving the tire and the wheel back in. So here we have some nice monogram drag slicks, which were quite popular in the model kits of the dragsters back in the day. They also have this big open insert here, or sorry, a hole for the wheel insert, which would go in here. Now what's interesting about this molded in white plastic is it does give you a white wall. Now I don't know if on the real car it had white walls and they were reversed in because this is going to be the outside of the wheel. That's where the Toronado hubcap is going to fit in. But one cool thing on here is that Goodyear is molded right into that white wall. I don't know how well that would pick up. You can also see the pie plate type crust around the outside of the wheel. and. Overall, these wheels are quite nice. What I did also is sand down the edge of the wheel just to make that look better. And if you want to see a video on how to do that, check it out scrolling across right here. But overall, again, the wheels look really nice. The fit is really tight and the glass is quite crystal clear. Finally, we have the decal sheet. And this model came out in 1998 by Ravel Monogram, as noted on the decal sheet. So here we have all the 442 emblems, which go around the car. We also have our seat belts in here. And down here, you can't really see it in the video, but there is some white letter script for Telefax, for Milden, for Krager, Sharp, and Bell helmets, as well as Miss Linda Vaughn and that sort of thing. And then we have all the other sponsors like Hearst, the little shifters here the NHRA de decals, and then all of these ones. We got Champion, as well as, again, more Hearst Shifter ones, Goodyear, Pennzoil. Now here are the gold stripes, which go on the model, as well as these, which I do believe look like little tail lamps. And then we have Hearst Harry Oldsmobile, as well as all the gauges on the instrument panel. And then this lettering is for the Hearst Golden Shifter, Oh, I know what some of these are. These also go on Linda Vaughn herself, the little figure. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the limited edition Ravel Monogram Linda Vaughn Hearst Harry Olds model kit. And if you really enjoyed that video and found it helpful, don't forget to smash that like button so that this video goes up in the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video. 
Tune in next week as we check out the AMT Ertl 1969 Hearst Oldsmobile.